Good morning everyone, welcome to Healy Homestead. I'm Leslie. In today's video, I want to take you along on my process of making sourdough bread. Let's get started. The first thing you need is you need a sourdough starter. So I fed this starter about 10 hours ago. Um, I did feed a one to two ratio, which means one part starter to two parts flour to two parts water. So I started with 50 grams of starter. I fed 100 grams of all-purpose flour and 100 grams of filtered water. Lots of people do a one to one to one ratio. That is also totally fine. Just keep in mind, if you're going to feed a higher ratio, um, if your starter at a one to one to one ratio peaks at, let's say six hours, a one to two to two ratio will take approximately double that time to peak. So that's something to keep in mind when you're feeding. You can see that. And it's nice and bubbly and active. Move you guys in a little bit closer. Sorry if I'm cut off a little bit, but I want to get you guys in closer so you can see what I'm doing. For this recipe, I'm actually going to make a double batch because we are running low on bread. If I was to recommend anything to have starting off, the first thing would be a kitchen scale. This is just a simple, very basic, like $10 scale that I had before um, I even started doing sourdough. Because we're doing a double, uh, double batch today, so two loaves, I'm going to measure 200 grams of active sourdough starter. So I got my scale zeroed out and we're gonna measure out 200 grams. 205, that's close enough. Like I said, we're not going to be particular and fussy. <clears throat> we just want to make some good bread. My next step is I add the water into the starter and I'm going to add 700 grams of filtered water. Okay. And again, it doesn't have to be exact. If you go over like 702, 698, it's fine. It's totally fine. What I'm gonna do, guys, I'm gonna move you closer again. So you can see. You can't see me, but that's okay. You need to see the dough. You don't need to see me. So we're just gonna keep mixing it until it's a nice milky liquid. It's perfect. Now we're going to measure out our flour. And we are going to add. 1,000 grams of flour. I'm just using all-purpose, unbleached all-purpose flour. You can use bread flour if you want. You can use whole wheat. Um, but for the sake of this video, we are just using plain old all-purpose. And that's what I typically use most of the time. Now, so all I'm gonna do is take the same little wooden spurtle and mix our 1,000 grams of flour into our starter and water mixture. And I'll put the recipe below. And if you only want to make one loaf, you're just gonna have to divide that recipe in. And get to the fun part, we're actually gonna get our hands into the dough and start bringing all of this together. So another tip is I always like to have just a bowl of water next to me when I'm doing sourdough. And I dip my hand in, keep my hand Nice and moist so that the dough doesn't stick as much. It's still gonna stick. It's very sticky dough. It's very wet and very sticky. If you're used to making what I call homemade bread with like commercial yeast, um, it's nothing like that. <laughs> so don't try to get it to that um, consistency because you're not gonna get there. It's a very wet, very sticky dough, but it all comes together. So we're just going to keep at it again and go back in. You don't want to leave any dry flour. You want to get everything combined. And again, a lot of people just do um, an auto lease with autolization, where it's just flour and water. This is a fermental lease. We've because we've already added the starter. And just a note: 
Um, when it comes to the bulk fermentation, bulk fermentation starts when you add your starter. So if you add it at the beginning, like I just did, or you add it in an hour's time, that's when you start timing your bulk fermentation. This could take a few minutes, so have patience. We have everything combined really well. So you can leave it at this point, cover it with um, either a damp tea towel, plastic wrap, or beeswax cover, whatever you have. Right. What I'd like to do at this stage, like I said, you can leave it at this point, and you have a very wet, it's wet and it's, you can see it's, it's sticky, but it is, it is staying together. So it's not like a sloppy mess. I like to do this process. There is a name on it, I think. I don't remember what that name is, but it kind of brings the dough together a little bit more um, and it incorporates some air into the dough and helps start the process of developing the gluten. Again, totally optional, but all I do is I wet my hand, as you can see, and I kind of come under, I scoop under the dough and I kind of push it into the side of the bowl. And I just keep doing that. Just push under and pull up, push under and pull up. And you don't want to overwork it. You just want to gently bring it together. And again, totally optional. Okay. So now we're going to leave it as it is. I'm going to use my dough scraper and I'm going to kind of come around and clean, clean and scrape down the edges of my bowl. Okay, and this is what we're left with. And we're going to let it sit for one hour. Then we're going to come back and we're going to add the salt. So I'll see you guys in an hour. Hi guys. So we're back. It's been an hour since we last checked in and we are at the point where we are going to add our salt. So I like to use uh, kosher salt. You can use uh, sea salt, pink Himalayan salt, anything but regular iodized table salt. So what we're going to do, again, because we're doing a double batch, we're going to measure out 20 grams of kosher salt. So if you're doing one batch, you'd only measure out 10. We're going to add our salt to our mixture. So what I'd like to do is take the salt and just sprinkle it over the top. Using wet fingers, we are going to dimple it in to the dough. And you can already see after an hour, our dough has come together much more than before. So dimple it in and then we're just going to start incorporating the salt. And again, I'm going to use the same method that I did earlier, where I push in and pull up. You can already see that our dough has started to come together nicely. The gluten has started to develop and it's holding its shape much better than before. We're, we're past the shaggy, sticky dough stage. And that's it, that's it for adding the salt. So what we're gonna do is, and you can see, it's a much more cohesive ball of dough. What we're gonna do next is cover it back over and leave it for 30 minutes, and then we will start our series of stretch and folds. So I'll see you back in 30 minutes. Okay guys, we are back. It has been 30 minutes since we added the salt to our dough and we are now going to start our stretch and folds. You can also do coil folds. Um, I will probably show you both in this video. I like to do three to four sets of stretch and folds, um, about half an hour to 45 minutes apart, give or take. Um, depends on my schedule. So let's get started. I'm going to again, wet my fingers and to do a stretch and fold, you're simply going to stretch one corner of your dough, stretch it up as far as you can. You don't want to stretch it so far that it rips and fold it over itself. Quarter turn on your bowl, pick up the next corner, stretch 
and fold. Quarter turn, stretch, and fold. And as you go around your bowl, you will notice that it gets harder each time to stretch. This is because we are developing the gluten and fold. You can do this one or one to two times. I'm only going to do it once. And then if, after my stretch of folds, I just kind of just like to shape it back into a little bowl or a little dough ball. And that's it. We are going to cover back over. We are going to let it relax for 30 minutes and repeat the process again. I probably won't show you all the stretch and folds. Um, I'll come back to my last one and I'll show you how to do a coil fold. So I will see you back in a little bit um, for our last stretch and fold and uh, we'll check in then. We are back. Um, we're going to do our final set of folds. Um, I did one off camera, so this will be our third set. And for this set, I'm going to show you how I do coil folds. But if you can see, you can already see some fermentation bubbles starting um, on the surface of the dough. So I'm going to put my fingers one more time. And for a coil fold, I scoop under the dough, gently pick it up and let it release from the bowl and just gently fold it over itself. Quarter turn your bowl, same thing, just gently pick it up and fold it over itself. I'll do this about four times. Let me show you the window pane test. I don't usually do this, but for video sake, I'll show you. So what you wanna do is pull up on your dough and stretch it. Can you see that? Stretch it as thin as you can. You should be able to see light through your dough without your dough ripping and tearing apart. That's how you know that your gluten is well developed. So we're just gonna shape it back together and that's it. We're gonna leave this little dough ball alone now for the next few hours. So we will check back in later on tonight and um, I'll show you how to pre-shape and uh, then shape your dough to get it ready for your bannetons. Check back in later, guys. Hi guys, we are back. It's been a few hours since we last checked in. As you can see, it is quite dark outside. So it's time to get this dough out of the bowl, into the baskets and into the fridge so I can go to bed. I'm just going to lightly sprinkle my counter. This is rice flour. Um, you can use all purpose. That's what I used in the beginning until I got some rice flour. We're just going to I'm going to tip our bowl and we just want to gently, just gently tease the dough out enough and then just let gravity do its thing. Let the dough come out. And it comes out nice and clean out of the bowl. So what I'm going to do, I'm still going to wet my fingers again like we did the last few times and I'm going to just kind of pick up the dough very soft now. You can see lots of bubbles. We're just going to bring it together with a huge bubble right there. So bubbles like that, just like to gently pinch and let it deflate. So we're going to split this in half. If I was doing this, you know, if I want to be precise, I could take out my scale and, and measure it, weigh it out. We're not doing that. This is just for my family. They don't care if one is bigger than the other. And we're just going to take each portion and just kind of roughly shape it. This is not our final shape. This is just our pre-shape. 
Um, what we'll do is let it sit on the counter for about 20 minutes or so and let it relax again. Then we'll do our final shape and get it in the banneton baskets. With my fingers, I'm just going to pull like you're, you're cupping your hands and under the dough and just gently pulling it towards you. A little bit of a turn. A lot of people like to use the bench scraper to guide them. I personally don't. I like to just use my hands. Just cup and pull. Just want to make it into just a loose ball. And this will relax out again in, in the next 20 minutes. Okay, so that's one. Oh, there's another really big air pocket there. We're just going to let that deflate. So lots of good fermentation bubbles. There's that one. Just going to tuck, tuck with your hands and kind of scoop and pull. Turn and pull. Okay, now we're just gonna leave these guys alone for um, the next 20 minutes or so, and then we will be back and uh, we'll get them ready for the cold fermentation stage. So we'll be back in about 20 minutes. All right guys, we're back. It's been 20 minutes. Our bench rest is complete. You can see the dough has uh, relaxed a little bit. So now we're going to do our final shape, get them into the bannetons and um, put them in the fridge. Um, you do not need bannetons. You can use, um, just use a regular mixing bowl or whatever you have home. We are going to line them with tea towels. I do like these flour sack tea towels. I'll try to link everything that I'm using down below. So let's get these guys shaped. Actually, the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to get my bannetons ready. So I'm just going to line it with my flour sack tea towel. And we're going to flour, flour it with some rice flour so that the dough doesn't stick. Some of these do come with liners. Um, mine didn't, which is fine. The tea towels work just as well. And I am going to show you, I'm going to show you how to shape a batard, which is the, the lime um, oval shaped loaf and a bowl, which is the round loaf. Now, I am no professional. This is just how I do it. So let's do the bowl, the round shape first. And we're going to flip it over. Get my fingertips. And we're just going to kind of gently, gently pull out the dough. You don't want to break all the nice bubbles that you have spent the last 10 or 11 hours trying to create. Just gently tease it out with your fingertips, going around the edges. So when I'm doing a bowl, I kind of like to picture it almost like the face of a clock. 12, 6, 3, and 9. So those are your starting points. So we're going to pull up at 12, bring it in, press it into the center. Pull up at 6, bring it in, press it into the center. 3 o'clock, pull out, bring it in, press it into the center. And 9 o'clock, pull out, bring it in, press it into the center. So then you have these four points, four corners, we're going to do the same thing. I'm going to pull out and tuck it in. Pull out, tuck it in. Pull out, tuck it in. Pull out, tuck it in. We're going to flip it over. Now we're going, we want to create tension on the top because this is what's going to help give us our rise in the oven. So we're going to do the same kind of push and pull motion that we did when we were doing our um, bench rest. Just cup your hands, pull and twist. You see what I'm doing here? Pull and twist. You don't want to do it so much that the, the surface of your dough starts to tear. If you find it starting to tear, 
I want you to stop. You've, you've gone far enough. Okay, just like that. So we're gonna take our Phantom. I'm gonna scrape it up. I'm gonna drop it right into the Phantom. If you find it starts to pull apart, you can kind of just stitch it together, pinch it together with your fingers. And that's it. That's our, that's our bowl. Okay. Put them in the fridge. You're going to cover them, you know, put them into a plastic bag and tie it over. I like to use plastic shower caps from the dollar store. They work wonderful. That's it. So that one is ready to go. And now we are going to shape our potato. So same thing, we're gonna flip it over, ease it apart. So to shape a batard, I kind of do it um, envelope style. So we're going to take the top and fold it down to the middle and kind of press it in. We're going to take the two ends, pull out, bring it into the center like that. Take the bottom, bring it up, fold over, fold over, and stitch it together down the center, flip it over. Can you see what I'm doing, guys? Or my hand, my own hands in the way. Push and pull. And basket, scoop under, and into our banneton. Pinch down the seams. And same thing. Cover it over. And into the fridge. After a 16 hour cold ferment, we are back and ready for the best part. Well, the second best part. The best part is actually eating the sourdough, but we're ready to bake. So let's get, um, this is the batter that we shaped. Let's get this ready for the oven. I have the oven preheated at 500 with the Dutch oven inside. We are going to lightly flour with some rice flour. So we're going to do a simple score today, just right down the center. I like to do it fairly deep, so I'm um, scoring it a couple of times. And then we are going to pop it into our preheated Dutch oven and into the oven at 475 um, for 20 minutes with the lid on. And then we are going to um, after 20 minutes, we are going to reduce our heat to 450 and bake for a, another 25 minutes with the lid off. So here we have our fully baked batard. It kind of, um, it puffed up a lot in the oven, so kind of lost um, a little bit of the batard shape, but it's still beautiful regardless. And here we are with the second loaf, um, the boule. We are going to flip that out onto the same piece of parchment paper. I like to use it a couple of times before I um, discard it. This one we're going to, again, lightly flour with some rice flour. And we're going to do a little bit of a fancier score in this one just to show you guys. Um, the bowl, I kind of like to do a cross-patterned score. And we're just going to do a quick and simple um, wheat pattern on each of the four sections. takes a little practice but it's really it's not that difficult you just need a sharp blade I like this UFO um, bread lame that I purchased from um, Amazon again I'll try to link everything down below and the bowl is ready to go back into the Dutch oven again 20 minutes with the lid on at 475 25 minutes with the lid off at 450 
and listen to that crunch, guys. It is a beautiful sound. Now to let this cool, and uh, then we can slice it up and have a look at the inside. Here we have our beautiful batard. It is time to cut into this loaf and see what the inside looks like. This is always the most stressful part for me. I'm always anxious to see what the crumb is like. Here we have an absolutely beautiful crumb, soft center, and crispy crust. I can't wait to enjoy.